Hey everybody, it's Peter again, and it's day three of Triple S Veda, which is again the Savvy Sexy Social vlog every day in August, and I seem to be doing pretty well. I'm actually doing in a row. The last time I was actually had to do nine in a row. I did like one to nine in one day. Uh, maybe I really want to get in on that uh, freebie from Amy of getting a one-on-one -on -one coaching session. And today's topic is talk about something interesting of the city you live in. And I live in a place called Markham, Ontario, which is about 30 clicks or about 20 miles northeast of Toronto. I will put a card and or the look. We'll look, look, look for wherever. I will put a link here to uh, probably to the WikiLeak, WikiLeaks, to the WikiLeaks. Yes, we have WikiLeaks to the to the wiki page about Markham, Ontario. Uh, brief bit of history uh, before Canada was Canada, before Ontario was Ontario. It was called Upper Canada, which is just a small portion. And back in the 1700s, it was run by Lieutenant Governor John Simcoe. Interesting fact, the long weekend that's coming up for us here, which is this coming Monday, it's always the first Monday of August, it used to be called Simcoe Day, or just reverted to calling it a civic holiday. But back in the 80s, and when I was doing reenactment with the reserves, we used to do a little parade downtown Toronto, in celebration of Simcoe Day. So John Simcoe was one of the, you know, founding, I guess not really a founding father, but he was one of the guys in charge back back in, say, 1750. And he had a buddy called William Markham. And the two of them said, you know, hey, let's get together and let's, you know, get some people up here and get some settlers. Okay, and a fellow by the name of William Burnt Sam, uh, it's, it's, it sounds uh, East European, I can't really say it properly, but anyway, it'll be in the wiki article. And they were going to settle, he had a group of people, about 64, 65 families, that was going to actually s settle in New York State, but I guess there was some kind of a mess up or paperwork red tape of some sort back in the day. So they talked with John Simcoe, and he said, yeah, come on up. We're building a place, why don't you bring it? So uh, this other William brought up his people, and they formed what is now Markham. Well, Markham was a town for like the longest time. It's grew and grew, and actually, up until um, 2012, Markham was actually Canada's largest town. It was a township for the longest time. Actually, uh, I'm born in downtown Toronto. We've lived everywhere, mostly in the suburbs, not so much downtown. I think a little bit when I was a kid, but then we ended up in the burbs, uh, different parts of in and around the Toronto area. And then back in 82, my parents decided, well, let's move up to Markham because there was more area to live in. Now it's congested. It's getting a little more congested now, but back then in uh, 82, 83, Markham was about uh, 85,000 people. And now as of uh, the last uh, census, it's about uh, 310K, which is pretty good. You know, that's quite a bit of growth over 30 plus years. But the foundation of Markham um, like I said, it was back in the 1700s, you know, the, the German people came up there. So just sort of like Amy's hometown of Columbus, Ohio, there's a German faction lived there too. Uh, we don't have too much Germania going on around here because Markham is actually mostly ex-generation Canadians now. Um, we do have a lot of uh, Chinese and other nationalities moving up this way. Uh, and, and moving in and around uh, and this year as well too there's a big push to make uh, a city center because it used to be just like certain streets were like well Markham Main Street is Markham Road so that was sort of like center of just sort of like Young Street in Toronto is the center of Toronto so there are certain parts of you know what is now city of Markham that still have little areas to say well this is actually downtown you know, you know, small town area, that kind of thing. So just like other places too, you know, just like New York City, but you still got Queens and the Bronx and that sort of thing. But the other thing is too, I'm not sure if they took it off the signs, but at one time Markham was known as the uh, technology capital of Canada. Uh, when ATI was around, they were building graphic cards back in the day. They are now bought out by AMD. Uh, there's also other companies that's in and around Markham, like Honda, Hyundai, um, there's a quite a big, uh, just on the s south border touching Toronto, there is an IBM office there, which is, I think, one of the largest IBM offices in Canada. And, you know, a variety of other things. I think there's like a thousand different technology businesses just in Markham itself. So even though we're not big, we've got a lot of pull on certain things. 
And I think since we became a city, uh, Markham is now the 16th largest city in Canada. So that's pretty good with having Toronto to the south. And the one nice thing about living in Markham, that um, we didn't live much in Toronto. We just, like I said, everywhere else, West End, East End, now we're like north of the city. But what's, what's the nice thing about Markham is, is that we're still in sort of the northern part of Markham. So you just go up a few major roads up, you're already hitting again. We still have farm country up here. And the other day, too, when I went to the Tank Fest, if you check out my other videos, uh, I had to drive, you know, uh, about an hour west of me, sorry, west uh, east of me, uh, to go to the Tank Fest. And when I was driving down one of the roads, it was called Highway 7. It's a sort of a rural highway. And I was driving through country, even though I'm on this really nice, you know, flat top. You know, you got trees and all sorts of things. It was it was a nice ride as opposed to like being right in an urban center where it's like building, building, building. Uh, but it's nice when you can just drive, you know, say not even two minutes, five minutes, and you still have fields. Uh, at one time, the the next street up from us used to have actually a cow farm. That they've been building up the urban areas. The only downside of Markham is is like most rural areas, is that um, they didn't, they didn't build for traffic, but I mean, it's only two lanes of traffic, north and south. So when you're trying to get out of town during rush hour, trying to get back in uh, during rush hour, it's horrific. Uh, what's called Highway 7, which sort of goes to the middle of everything. It's an east to west uh, chunk of road. They are getting smarter. They're making an independent uh, bus lane in the center with at least three to four lanes on either side to make up for the congestion going east to west but they do have the work on north to south so yeah we're pretty in a pretty neat place you want to go into toronto and the traffic's not bad you can be downtown in half an hour if traffic is a little heavier an hour plus you may have to go not take the um what's called the don valley parkway or highway 404 which actually if you look on the wiki's article that when that was built more traffic came northward because that basically connected toronto to the more northern regions the only downside is I find for some things, uh, I still like alternative music and other and other things. Uh, it's hard to find that in this. We're, we're, we're sort of almost not townsy kind of thing, but when I'm looking for certain venues, I have to go downtown or for other um, you know, things outside of the regular norm or the you know pulp cult, you know pop popsy, you know top forty cultural stuff. I have to go other places to get my fix. Yeah, so. There's some interesting information from where I'm from. Uh, and where are you guys from? Where do you live? What's what makes your place uh, great and wild and wonderful? Uh, say in the comments below. Remember, like if you like, dislike if you dislike, subscribe. I'm up uh, to 52 now, and we're almost up to 4,000 views. So I'm moving quite along nicely with the start of the SS Veda. So that's it for me, and we'll see you in the next one.